Guys, what's up and welcome to this new lesson by me, Ranjit Krishnayar. And in this lesson, we will discuss the previous year questions of asking the chapter of work power energy between 2011 and 2015 in the examination of need. We'll start off with a question which basically deals with the concept of conservative forces and potential energy. Then we'll move on to work done on a spring. Then we'll see how to calculate work when you are given force and displacement as vector quantities. And lastly, how does the velocity uh, relate with time when the instantaneous power is constant? So without any further delay, let's begin. So let me just briefly introduce myself uh, before we start. So I did my B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from IIT Madras and I also cleared the J.E. Advanced exam as well as the J.E. Main exam back in the year 2010 with All India Rank 321 and 355 respectively. And I currently teach for competitive exams like J.E. Need, KUPY, Olympias, etc. at Resonance Quota. And you can follow me on this link www.unacademy.com slash user slash at the rate RKN. All right, so let's start off with a question which was asked in NEET 2011 examination. The question goes as follows. It's a theoretical question. Uh, the potential energy of the system increases if work. So here it is work that is written, which is hit, hidden behind the logo. The potential energy of the system increases if work is done. Option A, upon the system by a non-conservative force. Option B, by the system against a conservative force. Option C, by the system against a non-conservative force. And option D, upon the system by a conservative force. So that's uh, the question. And as usual, pause the video, attempt the question, and then we'll discuss the solution. I hope that you have attempted it. So it's a very straightforward question, but can be a little confusing. Uh, so obviously, uh, we or you, you can just simply ignore the options A and C because here con non-conservative forces are there. Uh, so obviously, that cannot be the answer because potential energy is defined only for conservative forces. So it's uh, what conservative forces are doing that is what matters, not the non-conservative forces. And we know that work done by conservative forces is negative of the change in potential energy. So obviously, you can write. Potential energy change is equal to negative of work done by conservative force. So if the potential energy has to increase, the work done by the conservative force has to be negative. So that's how potential energy increases. Let's see a simple example to understand this theoretical point when a ball is moving up. Okay, and let's say it moved up uh, by height h, right, from the floor. So its potential energy increased to mgh. Right now, work done by gravity was actually minus mgh, and that is why the potential energy increased to mgh. So, for potential energy to increase, the conservative force has to do work. So, a uh, conservative force has to do work on the system. Okay, so option D is correct upon the system by a conservative force. You might get confused by option B that by the system against a conservative force, that won't be true because work has to be done by a force. So uh, force accompanied by displacements so option D will be correct work needs to be done upon the system by a conservative force Let's move on to the next one Here two similar springs with spring constant KP and KQ says that KP That is spring constant force constant of spring P is greater than force constant of spring Q They are stretched first by the same amount uh, That's case A and then by the same force which is case B The work done by the springs WP and WQ are related as in case A and case B respectively. So these are the four options and you have to choose the correct one. Um, so, you know, pause the video, attempt the question and then as usual, we'll discuss the solution. All right. I hope that you have attempted it. So it's a very formula based question. You just need to remember two formulas of uh, potential energy of the spring. And you must know from the previous slide that work done and potential energy are pretty much the same. There is only sign difference, right? So work done by the spring is equal to the negative of change in potential energy of the spring. So anyways, as far as magnitude is concerned here, what we are concerned is the magnitude, not the sign. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so here uh, when it is extended by x, the work done by the spring in magnitude will be half k x square. And here uh, work done uh, when the extension or the tension in the string is f, the work done by the spring is actually uh, f square by 2k, which is basically because the potential energy is this. Okay. And work done and potential energy are same in magnitude as far as spring is concerned. So if you know these formulas, then it becomes really easy because for case A, uh, for one spring, the constant is kp, the other spring, the constant is kq, and both are extended by same amount x. So we can use this formula because the extension is same. So since kp is bigger than kq, you can clearly see that wp is greater than wq. And uh, when the force or the tension in them is constant, right? 
we use this formula and uh, the different k's are kp and kq when you find wp and wq you can clearly see since kp is bigger the denominator is greater for p the work of p will be smaller so wp is less than wq which gives you option b so wp greater than wq and wq greater than wp in the two separate cases so that's the answer for this question let's move on to the next one so this is a very straightforward question very easy one i hope you will be able to solve it a uniform force of 3 i cap plus j cap acts on a particle of mass 2 kg the particle is displaced from the position 2 i cap plus k cap to meter to position 4 i cap plus 3 j cap minus k cap meter the work done by the force on the particle is so you have to calculate the work done by the force on the particle so these are the options uh, again pause the video attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution All right, so we have to uh, solve this question. It's very, very easy. There's nothing much to solve, which is simply based on the basic definition of work and the formula that we have to use is vector form. That is, work is defined as F dot S, where force when force is constant, you can use this formula. If not, if it is not constant, then of course you have to use the integral formula. But that's not the case here. The force is constant. It's a uniform force, so you can use this definition. And the displacement can be found as final position minus initial position. Both the final position and the initial position is given. So when you substitute it and do the dot product, you will simply get nine joules. So work done by the force on the particle is simply nine joules. So option D would be the correct answer. Now let's see this last question. And I would like to emphasize on this last question because it's very important. The reason is you will find many questions which have been asked in pre medical exam, even in AI triple E exam, when the power delivered is constant. I'll let you know what that means. Uh, so this category of uh, questions is very uh, important. This particular question is very very important because it has been asked in different forms in different exams. Okay, so let's see what this question is and let's discuss it in detail. A car of mass m starts from rest, accelerates so that instantaneous power delivered to the car has a constant magnitude p naught. So the power that is delivered to the car is constant in magnitude. It is always equal to p naught. Now. What they have asked is instantaneous velocity of this car is proportional to if the power is constant they want to know how is velocity related to time okay we they want us to calculate okay so as usual pause the video attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution all right so if you have attempted then we can say that we know that power delivered is constant so and we know that power is simply force into velocity so force into velocity that is product of force and velocity is constant and it is equal to p not now force can be written as mass into acceleration and acceleration can be written as m dv by dt so writing it in this form and taking dt on the other side and then integrating on both side i get mv square by 2 is equal to p not t which makes sense because this is kinetic energy kinetic energy is equal to energy delivered in time t if p not is the power uh, p over p not is the power then in t time the energy delivered is p not into t so from here velocity comes out to be under root of 2 p not by m into t power half so it is proportional to t power half so option b would be the correct answer so the instantaneous velocity of the car is proportional to the square root of time t this is very important and you can have several questions uh, which can be formed when the power delivered is constant they can ask how does the you know uh, uh displacement vary uh, with respect to time how does uh, acceleration vary with respect to time how does velocity vary with respect to displacement all these different types of question can be asked when the uh, power is constant so you make sure you, you you need to you know how to calculate uh, different relation between different variables when the power delivered is constant okay so that's pretty much from my side in this lesson i hope you really like this and if you did like it then please recommend the lesson and you can enroll in the course to get regular updates uh, i'll try to upload uh, at least some videos uh, on every day and uh, some uh, days i may not be able to upload for example tomorrow is sunday uh, i have i won't be able to upload uh, upload the videos really sorry for that but uh, i'll make up for that uh, the next day and if you did like the video then you can also review and review it and you can rate it and you can enroll uh, enroll to get regular updates like i said and if you have any queries doubt and feedback then you can 
comment away in the comment section please let me know how did you feel and share this video to as many people as possible so that those who cannot afford quality coaching and are not left behind and lastly please rate the video please rate the course five stars because when you do that it really makes me happy and motivated to make more awesome courses for you guys that's it from my side and see you in the next lesson in the next lesson we'll deal with aims questions